I'm glad to introduce our speaker, Dr. Fulgent P. Curitico uh, of Central Mindanao University. Dr. Curitico is an assistant professor at the Department of Biology at CMU. And from a research assistant, he rose through the ranks and uh, was appointed as university researcher and now the biodiversity research coordinator of CMU's Center for Biodiversity Research and Extension in Mindanao or SEBREM under the leadership of academician Victor Amaroso. Uh, Fulgent obtained his uh, PhD uh, in biology, systematics, and MS biology, minor in taxonomy in 2018 and 2014, respectively, from CMU. And he garnered his BS degree in biology also from the same university in 2009. He has authored and co-authored almost 60 scientific publications in the field of taxonomy and biodiversity. He has actively participated in several scientific and technical trainings, conferences, and symposia locally and internationally. He has received several awards given by uh, NAST, DOSTP card, and CHED. He is currently a reviewer of journals such as Phytotaxa, the Philippine Journal of Science, Philippine Journal of Systematic Biology, among others. He has also served as a focal uh, point person in field expeditions with collaborators from the California Academy of Sciences, Botanical Research Institute of the Texas, UC Berkeley, Taiwan Forestry Research Institute, and the University of Zurich. Currently, he is involved as project and study leader uh, in several projects funded by the DOST, DNR, CHED, and the U.S. National Science Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Fulgent Coritico. Sir, gandang umaga po. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, mayung buntag sa tanan. No? First of all, no, before I start my uh, presentation, I would like to thank uh, Sir Floor no, for that very kind introduction. And also, of course, for the uh, UPLB, uh, Museum of Natural History, for uh, inviting me no, to share our work here on biodiversity research, particularly on the ferns and lycophytes here in uh, Mindanao. Okay, uh, good morning again. No? Uh, I am Fulgent no, from the Department of Biology and the Center for Biodiversity Research uh, Extension in Mindanao or Sabrem you know, here in CMU. And this morning, uh, I will be sharing with you our uh, work and our uh, research no, and our experiences no, in conducting this uh, biodiversity research, particularly on the ferns and lycophytes of Mindanao, uh, its diversity, conservation, and new discoveries. So first, no, what are ferns and lycophytes? No? Ano ba itong mga ferns, mga pako-pako, and how to differentiate a fern plant from a lycophyte? So traditionally, no, we use the term, or we can still use the term uh, teredophytes, but uh, traditionally, it refers to the ferns and fern allies. But with the new classification, uh, showed that teredophytes is paraphyletic, so which means there are two major groups under the teredophytes. So we have the lycophytes and we have these uh, ferns. So what are these teredophytes? So basically, they are uh, lower vascular plants. No? Since they are lower vascular plants, what is dominant are the tracheids and sieve cells. No? Unlike the, the, the higher uh, vascular plants of which the vessels no? yung dominant niya. And also, they don't undergo secondary growth. No? So yung mga teredophytes, they don't go secondary growth. And also, they have these spores. Now, these spores is for uh, a sexual reproduction, or these spores are agents no, for a sexual reproduction. And for the teredophytes or the ferns and lycophytes, basically, you know, they can be categorized now, if they produce one type of spore, as uh, ang tinatawag doon is homosporos. And if they produce sila ng dalawang types of spores, that is heterosporos. No? That's the term, homosporos and heterosporos. But most of the ferns, they are uh, homosporous, which means they produce uh, one type of uh, spore. So here, if we take a look at the depiction of land plants in here, so here we have the bryophytes. No? The bryophytes, yeah, as you all know, these, uh, they are the first land plants to evolve here on Earth. And next to the bryophytes are the teredophytes. No? So the bryophytes, 
the dominant generation would be the gametophyte generation, but with the teredophytes, no, it started with the lycophytes, of which the sporophyte no, is the dominant generation of the uh, life cycle, and and so on, no, from the lycophytes towards the advanced uh, plant groups. So we have here, you no, know, the bryophytes, and next to the bryophytes are the uh, teredophytes. So the classification of ferns uh, of the teredophytes, now, according to Smith et al. in 2006, now, they showed that the teredophytes is paraphyletic. So which means these lycophytes, now, as you can see here, Eualaysia, with these monilophytes. Anyway, these monilophytes refers to the uh, ferns and the other families which are used to be fern allies, no? which is used to be part of these uh, uh, families of the lycophytes. No? So the monolophytes, these are the ferns, including the equisitum, or the horsetail, the silutum, and ophiglossum. So in this figure on your right, this is the teredophyte phylogeny group. So in this uh, classification, you know, just like the for the angiosperm, we have the APG, you know, from APG1 to APG4. But for the teredophyte, we follow this classification. You know, the teredophyte phylogeny group one, uh, it was published last 2016, <clears throat> of which uh, showed two major classes. So we have the class for the lycophytes. So in the upper part, these are the, the clade no, for the lycophytes. And in the lower part, this is the clade for the uh, class uh, polypodiopsida or the ferns. No? So as you can see here, these uh, ferns is much closely related to the seed plants. No? In this figure also, monilophytes group together with this, the spermatophytes or the seed plants. And this group is known as the euphilophytes. No? So meaning, um, ferns, the group sila together with these uh, seed plants and the lycophytes is in another uh, clade. So that's the classification. So we can use the word teredophyte and it refers to the ferns and lycophytes or we can still use uh, ferns and lycophytes or ferns and monilophytes. So those are some of the uh, ter uh, terminologies. And now we will discuss what are the characters now, of a fern plant. So this is a fern, this is a splenium nidus. This is a very common fern. No? the bird's nest. And as you can see here, they exhibited this uh, circinate vernation or coiling of the young front. So that's one of the character or known as the fiddle heads. No? That's the one character of the fern. And another one, they have this um, a sori. No? The sori usually found in the uh, lower surface of the fern or in the abaxial surface of the leaves no? sa, sa ilalim. And these sori, no, these are not spores no? because spores are microscopic. No? We need to use a microscope in, in looking at these spores. So these are sori. And these sori here, no? here this, this is uh, sori and the singular is uh, sorus. So this one, these are clusters of sporangia. So in each sporangium inside here are the spores. No? So those are some of the refreshment. No, these are not spores. No, these are sori. And also, a character of a fern is that they have this indusium. So this structure here covering the sorus, no, this is called uh, indusium. But there are some species of ferns uh, that doesn't have this uh, indusium. So the term would be ex -induciate, No. So the main function of this indusium is for the protection of this uh, sorus. And also, one of the character of the fern plant is that their fronts or part, of, this is part of the front or this is a segment. No? So as you can see here, veins are branch. No? Nag branch yung veins niya. So that's also a character of a fern plant. And also they have these megaphilus leaves. So meaning, malaki yung dahon nila, no? megaphilus. And now let's go to the, to the uh, lycophytes. No? What are the characters no? or the, the, the uh, features of these uh, lycophytes? So we have here, uh, they have these microphilus leaves, so meaning maliliit yung dahon nila or friend. And this leaf or friend is traversed by a single vein. Unlike the ferns, they are branched, no? nagbranched yung veins nila. But for the lycophytes, it is traversed by a single vein. And also, what is unique for these uh, lycophytes, no? this is Supertia and this is uh, Silagenella. So these hopersia or the club moss, as you can see here at the tip no, of, the, of the leaves, now you will find this structure. No? This is known as trubuli. No? This trubuli or this one, this trubulus, no, these are made up of synangia. No? These synangia, these are a fused uh, sporangium, no? container ng spores. So 
they are strobili forming. No? Yung ferns, they are sori forming, but for the lycophytes, they are strobili forming. And as from that, they don't exhibit this uh, circinate uh, vernation. So those are the uh, uh, features or the diagnostic characteristics to differentiate a lycophyte from a fern plant. And now, uh, in this figure, now it shows that here, now this is the bryophyte, this, uh, this, the dominant generation is the, uh, the uh, gametophyte. But for the lycophytes, now, as you can see here, the sporophyte dominance now, started with group, now, the lycophytes, and they have this microfill, so which means they have small leaves known as the microfill. And then eventually these uh, plants evolved and formed these megaphilus leaves, and now that's the ferns and the, the seed plants. So if we, we check this uh, figure, so which means that the lycophyte or a lycophyte is much older than the ferns. And also for the ferns, uh, they have these megaphilus leaves and these ferns include the equisitum. I think you are familiar with this equisitum. That's uh, the horsetail. So this one, we have, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we have uh, equisitum uh, ramosissimum. That's a horsetail. And also we have silotum, which is a primitive vascular plant and we have uh, ophioglossum. So that's uh, about the, the, the character not to differentiate elycophytes from a ferns. So here in the Philippines, we have a total of 1,100 species of uh, thredophytes. So with these, these uh, plants have different uh, economic values. So here, they can be used as a organic fertilizer as to the Zola pinata, no? in, I think in, 19, uh, in 1990s, were introduced now here in the Philippines as a source of organic fertilizer. And also the ferns, now they are some species of ferns that are hyperaccumulator. So just like this teres, this is a teres vitata and pitirogramma columinalno. So these are very common in mining areas and other species of ferns. And also we have, I think you are familiar with nito, no? That's a ligudium sercinatum. That is a common uh, raw material in making handicraft, no? so just like this one, in, in making baskets, no? baskets and also other products. No? That's uh, Ligudium sercinatum. No? That is, that's the scientific name of the nito. And also, there are many species of ferns that are considered to be a medicinal. Now, if you check the Prosea or the plant resources of Southeast Asia, you will see you know, the different list of a medicinal species of ferns. And also, there is a book of uh, academician Victor Amoroso about the medicinal ferns and lycophytes in the Philippines. And also the ferns can be used as a source of food. No? So I think what is common to you is this Diplasium uh, Isculentum. This is the common pako or the pako pako. Uh, ito yung ginagawang salad. No? And also if you are from Iloilo, this is very common so in your place. No? This is uh, Marsilia crinata or the apat-apat or the upat-upat or the common name would be the clover fern. And this fern also is a good source of antioxidant and also high protein uh, content according to the published work of uh, Dr. Uh, Amoroso and, and his uh, team. So with that, no, these are the different uh, economic uses. Aside from being an ornamental, these are other uh, unique no, uses of these uh, ferns. But what is happening no, here in the Philippines? So these are the different threats to our forest ecosystems. No, in our biodiversity in general. So we have here deforestation. This is common and it's still happening now no, in our country. And poaching, and especially now during the time of pandemic, there are many, no, there are a lot of uh local people no collecting plants no uh, they are over exploiting these plants no they collect sila dun sa field and then uh ano uh, they sell this one for a very uh cheap price no and then also we have development uh, activities such as mining so mining which is very common in in Surigao and other parts of Dinagat and the changing land use pattern, fragmentation, habitat uh, degradation. So these are the different threats to our forest ecosystem. And most of the time, no, our species of ferns, uh, lycophytes, are found in these forest ecosystems. Now, as you can see here, so this area is being cleared to give ways for these high value crops. Now, the tree ferns, so this one, these are the trunks, no, the remnants of the trunks of tree ferns, no, kinakat sila, just to give ways for these high value crops. 
And also, there's an over-exploitation of some of the ornamental plants. And also here, no, the tree ferns, no, they are commonly harvested no, in other parts here in, in Mindanao. So with this, again, this is another picture. This is an actual photo with our ongoing project funded by the USD. So these are things that are happening in, in our uh, area no, here in Mindanao. So we have shifting cultivation. We have human settlements. There's a small scale mining. There's still uh, illegal lagging. And of course, the spread of the invasive species, particularly this plant. Now, this is a, um, this is a Piper adoncum, which is a highly invasive no, species of plants here in, in Mindanao. And also you know, in this picture, you, know, you will see that there's an over collection of these ferns. So this is a, the critically endangered Platycerium coronarium. So this photo was taken just early this year. And also we have here, you know, the the here. Kino collect sila sa, sa wild. So it's because uh, I know that these people don't know that these plants are prohibited, no? Hindi pwedeng i-collect. So there's really a need to educate. So that is why with our project no, headed by Academician Amoroso, no, we are trying to educate these local people and also we need to, to strictly follow no, yung uh, 9147 natin. No? So dapat uh, natin educate yung mga local people and also we need to train them. No? Instead of collecting this, no, over-harvesting the, these uh, species, we need to train them in, in how to mass propagate these uh, species. And also with this Mindanao Pambi network, no, I would just like to sh share this slide because uh, the main agenda no, here is biodiversity assessment. And here, no, the, the agenda number one, resource management, including this biodiversity assessment. So that's the very basic no, uh, activity should be done in all the protected areas here in, in Mindanao. So that is why no, as, yeah, uh, as a faculty or as a researcher no, in an academy, no, we try to help because DNR cannot, hindi nila magagawa to na sila lang. So we need to collaborate. So that is why in our projects, no, we are collaborating with the DNR in this respective uh, protected area. So so that we can document no, because they cannot conserve, hindi, hindi nila makukonserve yung mga plants at saka animals kung hindi alam kung ano nandun ng mga resources sa kanila. So we need to do a collaboration, no? collaborative work, not just only in the DNR, but also in other, uh, other institutions. So now, let's go to the uh, <clears throat> ferns of Mindanao. So if we review no, the background about the fern floor of the Philippines, no, it was done by Edwin Copeland. Now, for those who are from UPLB, of course, you're familiar with uh, Copeland. Now, see, see Edwin Copeland, I think he's the first or he, he's the founder no, of the UP College of Agriculture in UPLB, and he's an expert on the ferns. So he published uh, three volumes of the fern floor of the Philippines, and this is the guy. No? See, Copeland, most of his work no, in Mindanao, where uh, uh, he, he conducted surveys in the island, of Mindanao, particularly in these mountain ecosystems. No? We have Mount Apo which is in Tudaya, which is part of the Davao region and, of, and also partly of North Cotabato. And also he has some collections or many papers published no, from San Ramon here in Zamboanga, in Mount Hilong Hilong in Agusan, and also in Mount Kitanglad here and in Mount Matutum in South Cotabato. And most of his uh, work is more on the discovery no, of these uh, species of ferns in Mindanao. So that is why there are many species no, named by this guy. Now, this is Edwin Copeland. And not just only in Mindanao, he, he works in different parts of the island, of Visayas and in Luzon, and also in neighboring uh, uh, islands, so, so Borneo and other uh, islands. So this is Copeland. So most of the new species or the, the species of ferns in Mindanao were described by this guy. And also we have here, uh, Dr. Prisciliano Zamora, academician Prisciliano Zamora. Now he also worked on the, uh, he's very known for the, the morphoanatomy of the Philippine ferns. And also he conducted a survey in Mount Apo, particularly in North Cotabato. And of course, now we have our uh, academician Victor Amoroso and most of his work is more on the uh, uh, medicinal ferns and edible uh, plants, uh, ferns in, in Mindanao. And also he conducted a uh, floristic work na, in, in the island of uh, Mindanao. So most of our sites na, in, in 
here in Mindanao is a protected area, not just like Mount Kitanglad, Mount Apo, Mount Hamigitan, Mount uh, Malindang, Mount Pantaron, and Mount uh, Tago. No? Those are our uh, research uh, sites. So in conducting um, diversity studies no? or floristic work, of course, uh, yung gagawin natin is more on the transect walk. No, opportunistic or transit walk. As you can see here, we started at the foot of the of the mountain. Now this is in Barangay. So this is in Mount Tago here in Bukid. No, we started our transit walk from the foot of the mountain. So this is a uh, Barangay Kibalabag, and then we uh, climb no up to the peak of the mountain. So here. So as we walk now, we collect specimens, we identify, then we rec record no, the different species of plants found in this area. And also in some areas now, we establish a 20 by 20 sampling plots no, to, to compare no, the, the beta diversity no, from this uh, elevation, uh, this uh, vegetation, so up middle and also in the upper uh, elevation. So that's our uh, methods in conducting these uh, 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 floristic studies. And also, <clears throat> Of course, if you are a field worker, now this is very common to you. Now, in our case, now since our our research sites is far from CMU, no, we work in Mount Hamigitan, which is about nine hours from our university in Mount Malindang. So malayo yung mga research sites namin, and so we hire or nakikipag collaborate kami with different LGUs. Na kung pwede, nagagamit kami sa mga rides nila, so yung dump truck or yung rescue vehicle nila yung ginagamit namin because we need to pass rivers no mga rivers at saka uh, sometimes no uh, uh, sumasakay kami ng skylab no tinatawag itong skylab dito yung motorcycle so kasi malayo yung lalakarin so we need to ride this no para ma-reach namin yung yung campsite and of course in doing actual field work we need to or you need to really prepare no days prior to your uh, sampling so as you can see here in this picture no Rami kaming dala because we'll be staying seven days or one week or 10 days in the field. So we need to make sure we have enough supply for the, our food, no, for our specimens, yung mga supplies materials namin because uh, we need to maximize because if, if you do field work, no, gumagasto na tayo, malaki yung gastuin natin. So we need to maximize our time and of course we need to gather many data no, as we can no, para toro yung documentation natin sa sa plants no in the in the area and also this in the field no this is an actual picture so natutulog kami sa tents now here this is in i think this is in mount apo uh, the northern part of mount apo in magpet and this is in uh, mount uh, pantaron and sometimes we were guarded by this uh, bagani no all the time, during nighttime and daytime, the uh, there uh, nanjan sila. They are with us, no. Especially kapag nagsasampling kami during daytime, no? nanjan sila. Of course, nagdadala sila ng kanilang mga armas, no, for our security. Uh, and also, this is in uh, in Pantaron. So that is why, no, in conducting field work, we really need to coordinate with the local communities. No, aside from the Datu, we need to ask permission, no, from the DNR. We need to ask permission from the barangay. No, we need to have the clearance. No, that's the basic. No, if we field tayo, dapat gagawin natin yon yung, yung mga activities na yon. So those are our uh, yung ginagawa no, sa field. And of course, no, sa actual sampling. We collect specimens during daytime. Now, during daytime, yung ginagawa namin, nagko-collect kami ng specimens. Of course, we need to collect specimens scientifically. So, tinitrain namin yung research assistants or yung mga graduate students how to collect the specimens properly no? and scientifically. And also, aside from collecting specimens, we need to educate our local guides no? or our uh, local researchers. So, so, we need to explain no, what's the importance no, of these plants, especially the ferns, no? So, anong but but sila kailangan, no? Natin, uh, why do we need to study these plants and what is the importance, no? Sa atong sa sa ecosystem natin. So, tinetrain namin sila, no? Tinetrain namin sila on how to collect and how to identify, and we are asking for the local name, no? Ano yung tawag nila sa sa kanilang uh, dialect. And also, this is an example. No, sometimes during daytime, nagpipress kami, especially yung mga fragile specimens. No, P uh, pinipress namin yan derecho. So, and during nighttime, most of the time, during nighttime kami nagpipress. No, this is a picture from Mount Kitanglad last 2013. So, during nighttime, no, 
even hanggang 11 p.m. kami nagpe-press ng specimens because we are maximizing our time no we need to collect as many specimens no kasi sayang yung tempo no yung nagastos na kayo so dapat we need to maximize our time so this is in Mount Kitang Lad and also this is in uh, uh, Mount Apo no together with our uh, collaborators from the uh, PNH Philippine National Herbarium si Sir Danny and also we have uh, Jenry so this is also in uh, Mount Apo. So we need to be scientific no? from collecting, from processing the specimens. We need to observe the scientific way of collecting and processing the specimens. And the question would be, why make voucher? But tayo nag collect ng specimens? No? It's because mainly plant identification, plant identification is not easy. No? Hindi madali ang pag-identify ng plants. Especially for me, uh, I'm specializing on tree ferns. So if if my tree ferns, no, there's no problem with me. No, I can identify the tree ferns because that's my expertise. But with the other families, no, there are many families of ferns. So we really need to collect no these uh, samples because we will identify that. Hindi natin niya identify ma identify sa field right show. And of course, we have the evidence. No, in some publication, we are they are requiring no. At the succession number or collection number of the specimens, especially floristic work. So that is why we are collecting specimens. And these are some, no, for those who are interested to work on ferns and lycophytes, now you can check this online. And also we have some revisions. Now, of course, you can check different floor of the Philippines by Copeland. Now, this is uh, our guide. And also there are some revisions now, made by other taxonomies, just like Hultum and other. Uh, pedologists, no, they uh, re made the revision, no? the Flora Malishana. So you can check other families with revisions here. And also there are some books available. And also as a good start, you can check the Cost Digital Flora of the Philippines. No? This website uh, was developed by uh, Dr. Pelser, uh, Dr. Barcelona, and Dan Nick Grant. So this is a good start. Now, if you have this uh, uh, collection, then you can compare no? with the photographs and the Cost Digital Flora and then validate using the taxonomy keys. And of course, not just like us, this is very helpful. Now, for those who are not familiar with this website, this is Global Plants JSTOR, or which you can check the type specimens. No? Uh, once you already have this pre-identification of your specimens, you can validate, you can check the, the uh, type specimens available in Global Plants JSTOR. So this, are, this is a database of all the digitized herbaria. No, we check natin dito sa Global Plants J Store. So let's say, for example, you try to search Sayathea. So here, nakarin siya geographically, and then if you click Asia, you find these different uh, countries. So Philippines, you click mo yung Philippines, these 314 specimens will come out. No, dalabas sila, and then if you check, example, I look for, I'm looking for Sayathea Puense. So here, ito yung urban specimens or yung type specimens, then you can click the Open Viewer. No? If you click mo yung open viewer, you can examine the specimens. No? There are some uh, measuring tool in this website. And also you can uh, download no? these various specimens and these different information. So this is a guide for you. So for those who are working on identification or trying to identify your plans and you want to validate, check this uh, Global Plants J Store. So now, how many species of ferns can be found here in, in, in the island of Mindanao. No? So in the Philippines, we have 1,100 species. And in, in Mindanao, we have an estimated number of 567 species, or this is about 52% of the total number of species that can be found here in the Philippines. And these uh, 567 species belongs to 130 genera and 37 families. And when it comes to the endemism, of these 567 species of ferns and lycophytes, there are about 130 species that are endemic, no? which is about 23% of these are endemic. And these in, in, in endemic species could be a Philippine or broadly Philippine endemic or uh, really a uh, island endemic or Mindanao endemic. Now for the Philippine endemic, there are about 91 species. So it can be found in the island of Mindanao and other parts of the country, in Visayas and Luzon. But for the Mindanao endemic species, we have a total of 39 species that can only be found here in the island of uh, Mindanao. So this one uh, from Mindanao. And here, these are the different families of ferns. Now there are about uh, 37 families recorded here in the island of Mindanao. And here, these are the top 10 species that have the most number of species. So we have the family Polypodiaceae, 
Philip Tridaceae, Tridaceae. So those are ferns. And we have Silagenalaceae. This is a lycophyte. And we have Linseaceae, Hymenophilaceae, Tictariaceae, Atheriaceae, Seatheaceae, and Dryopteridaceae. And basically, these ferns, no, sila yung common na ferns na makikita natin in different mountain ecosystems. Especially this family Polypodiaceae, it is expected because this is the largest uh, uh, family of fern, no? the family Polypodiaceae, and they are the most advanced no, group of fern. And for the area no, or the mountain ecosystems uh, obtaining the highest number of species. So this data in here, no, we have Mount Malindang, Kitanglad, Pantaron, Limbawon. These are, etc. These are from the published uh, uh, work of uh, researchers from CMU and also uh, thesis and dissertation, unpublished thesis and dissertation of graduate students from CMU. So as you can see here, these are different localities lo located in the different uh, areas in, in Mindanao. And as you can see here, hindi talaga lahat ng provinces represented. So that's why that's the, the gap. Now for those who are interested, in your region, no? feel free to conduct this research. And also, you can collaborate with us no? and trying to come up with this complete list of the ferns and lycophytes of Mindanao. Because for us in CMU, no, we cannot go to all the, the, the places here in Mindanao. So limited then, limited yung budget. Of course, no, we need to, if maganda ka ng project, of course, you need to have your proposal and you wait for the, for if mapafund yung proposal. So for those uh, who are, and as you can see here, yung mga regions na hindi talaga well represented, no, I encourage you, although there are some, no, nag email sa amin and they are willing to work. So we are also happy, uh, we are also happy to help you, no, to, to help you come up with this at uh, least, and maybe on the identification or, in other uh, ways. So here, these are the mountain ecosystems with the most number of species no? as of now. Now we have Mount Malindang, Mount Kitanglad, Pantaron, Limbawon, and Mount Apo. And basically these are matataas na mountain ecosystems na no? makikita natin sa, sa Mindanao. Because uh, there are many or most of the ferns can be found in these uh, higher elevations. No? So that is why marami tayong makikita in these uh, mountain ecosystems. And now we will discuss some of the representative no, species of the uh, species of ferns in uh, Mindanao. We'll start with this family uh, Isotaceae. No? So this Isotaceae, this is a, a um, lycophyte. So remember, uh, there are only three families for the lycophytes. You know, Isotaceae, Lycopogiaceae, and Silagenalaceae. And for this species, this is Isuetis philippinensis. So this species is uh, basically uh, a critically endangered species, no? critically endangered species and highly threatened to extension, extinction. So the last collection was made in 1969 no? in Olangi River, Barrio Balot, Baloe, Lanao del Norte, and can be found around 400 to 500 meters above sea level. So there are no new uh, uh, information about this species. So if you are from uh, no, Lanao del Norte, and if you are from this uh, municipality or or barangay, no, try to check no this plant because it has a very unique uh, habit uh, habitat. No, this is amphibious, so which means they can be found no in the water. No? They are submerged in the water, and that's uh, Isuetis philippinensis. No, this is the only species of Isuetis in the Philippines. No, Isuetis uh, philippinensis and found only in this uh, area. So. If makita mo ito, then it, that's a very good no, a paper na to make no, about this uh, plant. And next, a uh, lycophyte family, we have the family Silagenalaceae. So this family Silagenalaceae is known as the spike moss, but they are not mosses. No, they are lycophytes. So here, uh, there's a one graduate student, no, uh, a faculty from the USEP, no, si Dr. Uh, Bautista. She worked on the Mindanao Silagenalaceae, and she recorded about 38 species and I think she's working with that now, no? In describing these uh, three possible new species of Silagenella. So in Mindanao, we have 38, and in the Philippines, we have 47. So which means uh, when it comes to Silagenella, no, there's a high diversity of species in Mindanao. And another interesting species, this is now the ferns, no? Canina. They are lycophytes, and now these are representative species of the ferns. So we have 
Xylotaceae. So, siguro in your botany, it was uh, already discussed that this is a good example of a primitive vascular plants. So they are leafless, as you can see, they don't, they don't have leaves, and they are rootless. No? So these are primitive vascular plants. So Xylotum, we have two species, Xylotum nodum. So the Xylotum nodum can be uh, terrestrial or they can be epiphytes, but the Xylotum complanatum, this is a strictly epiphytic or epiphyte. So mainly, the difference between the two, if you check this one, yung stem nila, this one is rounded and the other one is flattened, no? complanate. No? That is why Xylotum complanatum. And then we have another species, the Amicipteris um, zamurarum. So this species is uh, usually found in the trunks of tree fern and nowhere else. No, Diyan sila uh, tumutubo sa trunks of tree fern. Hindi sila magkikita in other uh, trees. No? So that is why they are very unique. And this is, it started the evolution of the leaves. No? This is rootless, but now there's an appearance of the leaves. No? So this is uh, Misipteris zamurarum. So in the Philippines, for the Silotaceae, we have three species, and all of these can be found in the island of Mindanao. And then another one is the other stung fern. So other stung, this is a kind of snake, any other. So other stung, it's because here, this fertile structure, this is known as the sporophore, looks like a tongue of a snake. No? So that is why other stung snake, uh, other stung yung common name niya. So in the Philippines, we have a total of uh, uh, eight spe uh, 13 species and eight species can be found here in the island of Mindanao. So we have different genera. This is the common ribbon fern. This is Ophioderma pendula or pendulum. And then we have Ophioglossum reticulatum. We have the grape fern. No? Parang grapes yung fertile part niya. Butricum dausifolium. And then we have Helminthostachys zelanica. Uh, this is uh, Tungkod langit. No? And we were amazed no, when we attended the Flora Malishana Symposium in in Brunei na last 2019, I think. So, nakita namin to sa market nila. Kinakain pala nila yung Helminthostachys zilanica. No? Ito. So, sa Brunei, kinakain common pala siya. No? Just like our pako. So, kinakain pala nila itong Helminthostachys uh, zilanica. And then, for the grass ferns, so, this family, uh, uh, Schiziaceae. So, grass ferns, it's because Kung titinan natin, kung titinan natin yung, yung front niya or yung dahon, it looks like a grass, no? parang grass sila. But then these are ferns, no? they produce uh, spores. So here, we have two genera uh, of this, uh, Schiziaceae in the Philippines, and we have five species under the family Schiziaceae, and these species are found in the island of Mindanao, no? particularly in Mount Hamigitan. No? Mount Hamigitan is really unique, it's because all of the species of grass ferns can be found in the area. No? So this one, apat lang yung pinapakita ko kasi yung hindi maganda yung picture ko sa isang species. So this is uh, Actinostachys minuta. No? I have to highlight this species because unique din yung characteristic niya. No? So tumutubo lang siya sa trunk on tree, of tree ferns. No? Sa Yathea polypoda. And we're trying to examine other species of tree ferns no? na makikita ba ito siya. Wala, no? Specific lang siya with this a species of tree fern, no? Spiropteris polypoda. And I think this is the only species of grass fern epiphytes. And tinatawag siyang minuta because this is the smallest, no? Grass fern, no? Schizea, uh, uh, Actinostachys uh, minuta. And then the next family would be the family Hymenophylaceae. So ang family Hymenophylaceae, these are ferns, no? Na uh, uh, one cell thick. No, just like yung mga mosses, yung mga mosses, one cell thick sila, this is also a unique feature of this plant. No? So there is also a one graduate student working on this, Nietes, in 2017. So he list, she listed down 24 species out of 64 species in the Philippines. And also, this is my first, no? my first I love, no? because I started working on the tree ferns no? in my, sa, in, during my master's. And I listed down or I recorded about 20 species of Sayathiaceae, or scaly tree ferns in, in Mindanao. And in the Philippines, we have a total of 40, so about 50%. So what are ferns? No? Tinatawag siyang scaly tree ferns because ito yung character niya. No? Yung scales niya, ang dominant nga structure or feature na makikita natin sa stipe or petiole. So that's the unique feature. And also the scales can be used to identify the different genera of the tree fern. So scaly tree ferns is because the presence of these scales. No? And then in the Phili in Mindanao, so what I have said, we had 20 species, belongs to Asophila, Gymnospira, and Spiropteris. 
And another tree fern is the Dixoniaceae. So this is hairy tree ferns. Sinatawag naman siyang hairy tree ferns. It's because the presence of hairs, no? stinging hairs no? of Dixonia. So in the Philippines, we used to have only one species, no? Dixonia mollis. But then, last 2018, you know, we described a new species and named after the eminent uh, teridologist, academician, Dr. Victor Amoroso. So we named that Dixonia amorsuana. And in the Philippines, we have four species. And four species can be found in the island of Mindanao. And of course, no, this, you are familiar with this. No, this is staghorn fern or the Platycerium grande and Platycerium coronarium. No? As what I've shown no, in my previous slide, no, this is commonly harvested now, no? this coronarium. And these two species are critically endangered, no? listed in the Dow 2017-11 as critically endangered species. And also we have very interesting species of fern. Yung tinatawag siyang ant fern is because yung rhizome niya don't eto yung rhizome niya massive rhizome don don makikita natin yung mga mga ants no so tinatawag siya yung genus niya is Lycanopteris no so in the Philippines we have four species and in Mindanao kikita natin yung three species of this ant fern so we have Lycanopteris dipyroides Lycanopteris luzonensis and Lycanopteris uh, sinosa so now, those are the different species of ferns, no? representative families and species of ferns in Mindanao. And if we check the total number of threatened species, no, most of the threatened species no, are found in this uh, mountain ecosystem, especially sa mga protected areas. No? Mount Apo, Kitanglad, Malindang, and also in Mount Tago. No? Marami mga threatened species of ferns and lycophytes can be found in that areas. So these are some of the threatened and endemic species of ferns and lycophytes in in Mindanao, and also if, if you want to know more about this, no, we have a paper of this about the threatened ferns and lycophytes in protected areas in, in Mindanao. Now, as you can see here, we have this uh, platycerium, we have these lycophytes, we have this xylotum, no, and other species no, of tree ferns and so on. So now, these are the endangered species of ferns no, and lycophytes. So what to do with these plants? No? So ano yung gagawin natin to conserve these plants? So in, in CMU, we have this fern spore bank. No? This fern spore bank was uh, uh, funded by PICAR. No? We are very thankful with this uh, funding agency, the West Picard, no? for funding our project. So we have this fern spore bank, and this is the one way to save these endangered and economically important species of plants. So we are collecting spores, and here, this, since the spores are not always available throughout the year, no, hindi sila nagpo-produce ng spores throughout the year. So that is why there's a need for us to, to collect spores no, for this uh, fern spore bank. And this is a very promising IGC2 conservation tool. No? So to collect tayo ng spores. And what is very crucial for this is we need to collect the right timing. No? Kung ano yung timing na dapat pwede na i-collect yung spores. Kasi baka hindi pa mature yung spores. Sayang naman. So... so Yan yung tatandaan natin no? in, in collecting the, the spores. So, uh, ito yung project namin, no? of course, headed by Akanivision Victor B. Amoroso. So, basically, we're collecting spores and we tried to mass propagate selected species of ferns, no? uh, endangered and some economic species of ferns. And here, the developed kami, and we are very happy because we were able to come up with this uh, modified media. No? And we are working for the application actually kami just wait waiting for the approval from the ipo field for the um or utility model so we're able to produce this uh this media no uh, instead of using agar we use this media no among na yung aming na develop which is very cheap and readily available lang no unlike the agar major expensive siya. so successful kami for the mass propagation of these plants and also the, with this project, we try to determine you know, the developmental stages, you know, the development of the gametophyte and sporophyte of the selected species. You know? And also, we check you know, these Antheridia, Archegonia, the reproductive structures of these plants. Or so this is now, you know, this is in our spore and tissue culture laboratory. And as part of our project, you know, we also try to continue you know, uh, continue uh, mass propagating the species, especially this critically endangered uh, species. So with me, we have our research assistant and also we have Dr. Uh, Giang, uh, my co-researcher for this uh, co-researcher co for this uh, project. 
<clears throat> and also these are now the plants. No? These are the plants that from the laboratory galing sa spore and tissue culture lab namin, no? tinatransfer namin sila, sila sa, sa aming uh, university uh, fernery. No? So these are an example. This is the nito or the Ligudium sercinatum, yung kanina, no? yung uh, ginagamit as a raw material for handicraft making. No? This is Ligudium sercinatum and also other species of economically and endangered species of ferns. And yes, this is a young plantlet of the Platycium grande. And of course, no, with this uh, technology, uh, we were invited no, last 2019 no, by uh, our national scientist, Lourdes Cruz, no, to share this technology with our uh, different local people. No? We went to Palawan and also we went to uh, Subic, no? Try, trying to introduce this uh, spore uh, culture technique no, using the, the media that we have um, developed. So also here in Mindanao, we are uh, uh, extending no, our, our trainings yung sa mga local stakeholders dito sa local people here in, in Mindanao. And this is now our university fernery. No? For those hindi pa nakapunta sa CMU, no, please find time. If nandito kayo sa CMU, uh, please find time to visit our uh, university fernery. No? We made some improvements na sa our sa Sa, ano namin, sa university fernery and this is home to about more than 100 species of ferns and lycophytes no? dito sa university fernery namin. And also aside from this uh, uh, garden, we also distributed different uh, SEPA materials just like no, with this book and also we have flyers uh, distributed to different stakeholders. No? Uh, in general, hindi po lahat ng uh, uh, lahat po ng ferns no at saka ng plants at saka animals yung inaano namin yung uh, uh, ginagawa na, ginagawa namin ng sepa so binibigay namin yan sa two different stakeholders no? for to increase the enhance the awareness about the the importance of these uh, plants and animals and also uh, this is the last part of the project uh, of this uh, talk the, the new discoveries no the new species of plants that we uh, discovered in the island of Mindanao uh, last uh, 2018 up to present. So first, we have here the Sonia Morswana. This is a tree fern, hairy tree fern, named after our eminent tridologist, uh, Dr. Victor Biamoroso. And then we have another species, uh, Actinostachys uh, minuta. This is the third species of Actinostachys in the island of, and me, of Mindanao. And this is very unique because this is the smallest no, grass fern in, in, in the Philippines and I think in, in the world. No? That is why we named this uh, Actinostachys uh, Minuta. And also, this can only be found no, in the trunks of this fern. No? This is uh, uh, Spiropteris polypuda. And just uh, here, also, last year, we published this new species of uh, snake tongue fern, no? Ophioderma subsessile. So this is uh, the third species of Ophioderma in the Philippines. No? So it has a very unique uh, character. No, published in the PGS. So also we have several new records no, of species of ferns in the island. We have this Alsofila commutata, new record for the Philippines, especially in the island of uh, Mindanao. It used to be from Borneo and Malay Peninsula, but we recorded this one in the Philippines. Now we published this one. And also the Atherium nakanoi can be found no, in different uh, islands no, in Taiwan, in, in Indonesia, Malaysia, and so on. And it was first recorded in the island of Mindanao, particularly in, in Mount Kitang. So we have several new records no, for the island. No? For the species, new record for the island of Mindanao, which used to be distributed only in the island of Luzon and Visayas. No? So we have these three ferns, the ant fern and the Siligaya pyroflora, which is used to be found only in Luzon and Visayas islands. And also we have these it used to be a site endemic species in Mount Hamigitan, but we found this in other localities here in Mindanao. And also this Sayathea or the Alsofila Rufupan also, which is used to be found in Zamboanga only, site endemic, but we found this one in the island of Bukidnon, in the province of Bukidnon. So here, uh, of course, no, there are still many species for you to discover, no, not just only us, but for you no, I, as a young scientist, a student, or as every student, no, we work hand in hand no, to, to name because there are really many species, uh, new species of ferns no, here in, particularly in the island of Mindanao. In fact, we already submitted one paper uh, of the new species of fern again here in Mindanao. And now we are describing another a species of 
fern. So that is why we'll just work hand in hand no, to discover new species of plants, especially for the ferns and lycophytes in Mindanao. And here, I would just like to share this one no, as a part of our uh, SEPA. No, we are we have this uh, Sebram e flora and fauna. If you try to check this one, you no, know, you will see uh, we are still improving uh, this uh, website. So if you check Montago, you will see these ferns and lycophytes. No, and we have the list and we have the accession number, uh, the CMUH, and also there's available photographs you can check. This one and it's all about the website and. As so a summary, you know, we have here, Mindanao is the home of 567 species or 52% compared to the total number of species in the Philippines and about 23% are endemic. No? And Mount Malindang, Mount Kitanglad, Mount Pantaron, Mount Tago, and Mount Apo had the most number of species. And Mindanao also is the home of threatened species and endemic species of plants. And we developed SEPA materials for the awareness and importance of these ferns and lycophytes. And then we discovered or we described three new species, five new records for the island in the last three years. And the estimated, of course, no, the estimated number of species in the island continues to increase because of the new discoveries and new records for the island of Mindanao. And lastly, the above information, these different informations about the ferns and lycophytes is very important no, for the long-term monitoring and conservation of these plants. And it calls for a strict implementation of the ordinances necessary for the protection of these uh, species. Thank you all our partners, our CMU administration, the SEBREM, and also the DNR, our partner, and our funding agencies, agencies the UST, CHED, the UST PCAR, the DABAR, the Force Foundation Philippines, and of course, our collaborator, California Academy of Sciences and the Botanical Research Institute of Texas with our ongoing project, the NSF project funded by the US. And also, I would like to thank, of course, academician Victor Amoroso no, for helping us no, in doing this kind of research and in leading no, this kind of research in the island of Mindanao. And this is our team. No, this is the NSF team, Mariluk team, and the USDJA team. And with that, thank you for listening. And you are fantastic. No? And thank you very much for uh, listening. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, sir Fulgent. Very fantastic talk. No? Dami, parang, parang, uh, it's look like parang may crash course tayo on uh, bryology and pteridology, no? And I think uh, maraming, maraming makaka-appreciate uh, ng iyong talk. And uh, hats off to you, sir, and to your team sa buong Sebrem for, uh, for those discoveries to, uh, especially now na, of course, alam natin, mahirap po mag-survey sa Mindanao because of the, uh, the, the, Aside from the pandemic, is the, is the security uh, issues, and uh, yon maganda pa rin po ang nagagawa nyo, uh, regardless of the challenges. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for that uh, uh, mga discoveries na yon. So before we go to our question and answer, habang nagpapahinga lang po kayo while you're ruminating all over this uh, information, uh, if you have questions, just go to the chat box. Pag-type po kayo don. Uh, ask away but um, as promised meron po tayong slight uh, parang pop quiz lang to make sure that uh, meron lang ho kayong at least may natutunan or may nasagap kayong new information from uh, Sir Coritico. Let me just share my screen. So maraming sumagot ng sila Gilera and then let's see kung anong tagot. An apple tree, <laughs> sir, full gent, bucket. Yes, yes, po. You know, regarding the classification, you know, pinakita ko yung mga ferns is closely related to the seed plants. Mm -hmm. No, equisitum is a, a fern, no, part of the monil monilophytes. So they are closely related to the seed plants. So an apple tree, a flowering plant. <laughs> I see. Okay. Next question is which is older? Selagilene, na bubulol po kasi selaginella and <laughs> Platycerium. Some part nyo ba sinabi yan? <laughs> okay. Your 10 seconds is up. And maraming sumagot na mas matanda daw yung Sela Gilela. Uh, yes. Ano pong sagot dyan, sir? Yes. Okay. So 50, around 60% got it right. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, next... Uh, 
Oh. So identify this, it leaves microphyllous sporophylls often organized in strobili. Strobili, strobili. What strobili. is it? Okay. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. And the answer of our audiences are lycophytes, 100%. Yes. Oh, oh, merong, oh. <laughs> sayang, merong one fourth. Ay, <laughs> nagkamali. So the answer is lycophytes. All right. Last, ay, hindi pa yata to. Scaly tree ferns refer to what family? Dixoniaceae or the Cyatiaceae? I think ito yung favorite mo, no, sir? Yes, so. <laughs> okay. Sige, pag na may nagkamali, lagot kayo. Okay. <laughs> Sige. One fourth pa rin. Halos one fourth pa rin. So, yes. Okay. Favorite, sir, yung Sayate CA. Sorry, ha. Hindi ako... Ano yes. pamigay, scaly tree ferns. So, yun ang scaly tree ferns. So, it's a critically endangered and site endemic species found only in Baloy, Lanao del Baloy. Sur. That's Lanao del Norte pala. <laughs> ah, Lanao del Norte. Okay, ha. Correction. So, ang sagot, 87% uh, answered Isoetes, Pilipinensis. And the answer is, okay, 87% of you were listening. And I think, uh, second to the last, the spore bank is a promising ex situ conservation tool. True or false? True. My 5%. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, last question. Oh, second to the last pala yun. It's true. And then the genus name of the ant firm is? 50% lang naman ang opunan dyan. Ang uh, chance of getting it right. Chisazay and uh, Leconoptris. And the answer is? Lekanopteris. Ang sunagot ng ating mga audience, 73%. And the answer is Lekanopteris. It is. So, thank you. And I think oh, this is the last. A fern species yes. widely used as a raw material for handicraft making. Is it Ligopodium circinatum or Ligodium circinatum? Sixty percent uh, choose the first uh, first uh, option, and let's see. Ah, like gold, sirsinatum yun. Yun ba yung ginagamit sir na for your baskets kanon? Yes po. Ah, yes po. Okay. Uh, so like gold yun. Yung nito. Yung nito. So remember data, uh, that scientific name, like gold yung sirsinatum. Okay. So I think that's the last. So thank you very much for participating in our quiz. We'll proceed with our Q and A. So um, let's put your questions into the chat box. Oh, marami na. Oh, wait, I'll just. Okay. Um, first question from Annabella uh, Villorino. I think uh, she was referring to your some a part of your of your uh, uh, presentation. No plots were established at the foot of the mountain. I think when you were discussing your methodologies in your surveys, why is it so? And where was the Isoetes uh, species last found? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ma'am Annabella. No? So no plots were established no, at the foot. Uh, it depends, Ma'am, no, because uh, most of the time, uh, uh, the mount yung mga mountain ecosystems natin, yung lower, lower part niya is... Ano, uh, ano na siya, agricultural land, no? Parang hindi siya natural. So that is why we did not establish uh, plots in this area. So we just established our plots in this natural stand or sometimes yung mga secondary forest, nag-establish kami ng plots. So hindi kami nag-establish yung mga, ano talaga, yung mga open area. So what we did is just, we just need to list down what are the species of ferns that can be found in these open areas. Because there are also some uh, sun-loving ferns. 
no? which can cannot be found in the closed canopy na, na, na area. So, hindi kami nag-establish ng, ng plot no? at the foot of the mountain. It depends. No? If walang forest, walang vegetation, open siya, we will not hmm. establish a sampling plot. And for the next question, where was Aiswetis Espilas found? Uh, the Aiswetis Filipinensis uh, is only found in in the area no? ni Balui, Lanao del Norte. So, there was no uh, report na. After, the last collection was made in 1969. So, as of now, no, there are many attempts, I think, no, some of the students of Dr. Armoroso, no, and even some of my students, no, at, uh, if Tagalanao sila, so please find time to look for this species. No? Kasi wala ng records. And I think may pumunta doon, hindi ay swetis yung nakolect nila. Kundi yung nakolect nila is parang mga, mga grass. No? Hindi siya, hindi siya uh, ay swetis. So, Hopefully, if if there are some person from Lanao, mm -hmm. then you, please try to visit. No, because interesting talaga ito na plant no yung Aswetis Filipinensis. Thank you, thank you, uh, Ma'am Annabella, for that question. A uh, question from Mona Lisa Magat of uh, UP Diliman. So, just a curious question, sir. Does fern species follow any distribution pattern? And uh, she is also asking, uh, what are the most effective methods to protect? Fern biodiversity. Okay, yung sa first question yun yung pattern of the distribution of ferns. Now, basically, the pattern would be na in a one mountain ecosystem. So basically, uh, mapuputo siya ng hump shape pattern. No, uh, let's say for example, you establish a plot so in the lower lower mountain, uh, the upper mountain, and in the mossy forest. But basically, what happened is that most of the species, now based on our data the highest richness of ferns are found in the middle, at the middle part, no, in the mountain forest. Mm -hmm. And also, it, uh, yung sa ibang research in the uh, tropical countries in, in America, they also show the uh, same pattern. No? They use that uh, mid-domain effect or M MDE, no? mid-domain effect, na sa, uh, usually sa mid-elevation yung, uh, yung species nila, yung highest peak ng species. And regarding on how to protect these ferns no, and lycophytes, so actually that's a very, uh, uh, ano na question, no? Medyo, uh, ano, kasi yung ferns kasi, no, they, are, they can be found, especially we need to prioritize. No, in protecting ferns and lycophytes, we need to prioritize those species that are listed in the, in the, uh, and our national list of threatened plants. So, siguro in one way of uh, protecting this, of course, there's really need to uh, educate. No, we need to educate the local people. No, in fact, no, when we had our trip in one of the areas here in Bukid, non, nakita namin yung mga bata at yung ibang mga adults. No, nagko collect sila ng mga ferns. Tapos sinatanong namin, but you kino collect? It's because binebenta nila sa baba or sa iba or may nag order. So, tinatanong namin, alam nyo ba, ba bawal tong i-collect. So, just like that, no, we need to really educate these uh, local people. And of course, no, since uh, sa kanila yan, no, sa kanilang area, so maybe we can train them no, on how to mass propagate these species. And eventually, no, pwede na sila mag, ano, magbenta ng mga species of ferns. Okay. So, uh, siguro follow-up question lang. Uh, does it mean na kapag masyadong mataas yung rainfall or yung moisture at the top of the mountain. It's uh, basically, uh, it hampers also yung uh, proliferation ng ferns sa taas. Ganun ba ang tama ba understanding ko? Yes, uh, actually, uh, most of the ferns, no, kailangan sila. No? A majority of the ferns, uh, gusto nila yung area na, na matataas at saka mataas yung relative humidity. No? So basically naka-affect din yan no, sa distribution of the of the ferns. Now we need to consider that parameters na no, yung RH, yung temperature, yung elevation, no, those are some of the parameters that we need to consider no, regarding the distribution of these uh, ferns. All right. So so a uh, question from Vrinelli uh, Agaton. Um, just want to ask if there are some species of ferns and lycophytes uh, which you have discovered in Davao de Oro. Okay. Uh, actually, for Davao de Oro, I think that's in sa nang uh, anong lokal, anong mga municipalities, municipalities yan. So, hindi kami uh, actually uh, based on our listing, no, there's uh, no records no about the ferns, no, and like fights in that particular region, no, yung Davao uh, de Oro. So that is why, no, if you have the chance, no, to work on this, no, I encourage you kayo yung taga Mindanao. So say a region yo. If you plan to uh, to do research, na no, compare the ferns and lycophytes, then maybe we can help, no, with this because 
there's really no hindi hindi natin hindi namin maka-cover no yung kami sa CMU mga researcher hindi namin maka-cover yung lahat ng areas sa sa Mindanao so that is why no for those who are interested in these different regions no if possible no you can work on it and you can collaborate with us no so that we can also help you okay thank you a uh, question from Luigi Villalobos uh, he wants to know if the ferns and lycophytes uh, do they strictly live in humid and cool environment environments, uh, in particular, probably uh, mountains. Okay, uh, thank you, Luigi. No, uh, for that question, no, the ferns and lycophytes, no, uh, there are many, no, marami kasing species yung ferns at saka lycophytes. No, there are some species na hindi nila gusto yung malamig. No, yung sinabi ko kanina yung mga sun loving ferns. But generally, most of the ferns gusto nila yung nasa humid no or sa mataas na mga elevation. So magdepende siya no there are there are also some species of ferns no that are aquatic no hindi ko lang na discuss kanina. There are some aquatic ferns no there are some species of ferns that live in the mangrove areas. Mm -hmm. So it depends no on the species of these ferns and lycophytes. Okay. So uh, a question from Harold J Sumi Sumilhig. So uh, are there any fern and lycophyte studies in the Caraga region? In Caraga region, yes. In Caraga, I think there's no. Ah, yung work ni ano? Yung work ni Copeland, no? Si Edwin Copeland, Dr. Mm -hmm. Copeland. Siya yung I think nagwork siya jan no? sa Agusan somewhere that part no in Mount Hilong Hilong. And of course, no with his uh, study, hindi talaga yun ang floristic no. It's more on discovery of the new of the species no. Kasi sila yung pioneer nagko collect na so ng species doon. So, hindi talaga floristic yung ginagawa nila. So, basically, hindi nila na-collect lahat ng species of ferns. But yes, no, there are some data in Caraga. And I think there are some students, no, nakalimutan ko lang, mm -hmm. na nagpa-identify sa amin from the, that region in Caraga. But then again, no, sa sinabi ko kanina, if you do a work on ferns and lycophytes, yung floristic, yung thoro talaga, then please do that kind of work. No? Okay. So, uh, may follow-up question lang si Annabella Villarino. I think uh, this refers to the Isolated species. Uh, is it aquatic? Was it along Agus River? Because uh, she uh, she is from MSU Marawi. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The Isolated Philippinensis, no. Uh, this is uh, aquatic, no. Makikita natin siya. So yung pwede ko isend sa yung yung ano yung yung type locality talaga yung information, no. Para ma check mo yung uh, exact locality talaga. So yung species na yan is uh, aquatic, no. They are submerged no sa tubig. So meaning nasa ilalim sila ng big, no. No, hindi sa sa water. So siguro Miss uh, anong pangalan ni Ma'am? Si Miss uh, Annabella Villarino. Yes, Annabella Villarino. No? Sig siguro ma'am, no? if you have uh, time, no? kung pwede kunin ko yung ano mo, then I can send the, the exact uh, information about the species. No? Mm -hmm. Because that's a really, ano, kasi siya po talaga yung candidate for extinction. There's no any records about this uh, fern no? or this lycophyte no? in, in the Philippines. Okay. So uh, siguro pwede mong hanapin yung email address ni uh, okay. Sir Fulgent. So I think uh, madali naman ma-search yan or probably you could Sir Fulgent, if it's okay with you, you can share through the chat box your email address yes, for yes. others to uh, to contact you. So a question from uh, Joshua Michael Jonas. Um, he's asking, are there uh, distinct differences between the ferns uh, in Mindanao and that of the ferns from other areas in the Philippines uh, uh, like in Luzon? So in particular, uh, Mount Makiling. So yun po. Okay, thank you for that question. No, regarding the comparison about the similarity of the species uh, between these islands, no, we uh, we don't have really this uh, list, pa. No, although we have the list, we can compare that one, no, the existing list na uh, inventory in Mount Makiling. There are some species, so siguro 50%, no, just an estimation. So mm -hmm. siguro 50% in Mount Makiling, makikita dito sa sa Mindanao. Now, just an estimation lang. So that's also a good uh, suggestion no, to, to work no, with this uh, paper. No, I-compare namin yung richness or how similar yung species of these islands in Mindanao with the other uh, islands in, in, in the Philippines. No? Yes, sir. I think uh, para, siguro, uh, no, it could be a good uh, ano ba tawag dito? Like, if there's a problem with the conservation of some ferns in Mindanao and then it can also be, you know, seen uh, it's distributed also in Luzon pwede siyang 
ano ba, uh, mm-hmm. parang i-conserve naman sa ibang lugar. It's like you're transporting yes. it from from one place to another just to make sure that uh, it will uh, evade uh, extinction. So uh, from Leoni Cansabo, <coughs> sir, um, is there any fern species uh, which has an allelopathic substance? Allelopathic substance, not just like the, uh, yung sa mah- mahogany. mahogany. I think so far, yung sa mahogany. So I think, no, I have not, hindi ko pa nabasa na meron silang allelopathic effect no, in some, uh, sa, sa, ano, sa ibang ano. So I don't have any idea about this. Ang alam ko lang is yung ano, sila hyperaccumulator. No? Mm-hmm. Nag, ano, sila accumulate sila ng mga, met- mga metals Maybe and so metals. on. No? So I'm not familiar with the allelopathic uh, substances no, if meron yung fern. No? Okay. Siguro na, 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 uh, natanong ni ni Leone, kasi ako personally mayroon din ako mga na-observe na ganun na parang it's a field field talaga ng ferns and walang ibang mga uh, plant species ang ang nagi parang nakaka mm. nakaka-compete. So siguro yes. yun din ang isang relation doon, no? Yes. Uh, siya, may ganun din po ba kayong observation, sir? Yes, uh, actually there are some species of ferns that we considered as a a an invasive no mm-hmm. say for example yung tinatawag nating Tyridium aquilinum or that's yung yung common name niya is ano ba yung common name common name ng Tyridium uh, yung bracken fern mm-hmm. no yung bracken fern basically yun yung nakikita natin yung common no in if if you if you are going to clear a certain forest ecosystem or merong ginagawang ano diyan or yung kinakat yung kahoy so basically yung species of Tyridium aquilinum yung tumutubo So yung Tyridium aquilinum siguro nakikita niyo ah, baka may allelopathic effect ito because there's no other species of ferns that are growing with this uh, yes, plant yes. or this species that's because this uh, Tyridium aquilinum we have this unique feature no if we take a look at the rhizome yung rhizome niya they are subterranean so meaning subterranean punta lang sa ilalim no sa ilalim kahit pa putulin mo yung fern sa taas mm-hmm, yung rhizome mm-hmm. niya nandun pa rin sa ilalim. Kaya kapag ni-clear yung area, sila pa rin yung tutubo. Kasi yung rhizome nila nasa ilalim. No? So yung one of the example yung tinatawag nilang uh, Tyridium aquilinum or Bracken, uh, Bracken fern. No? I see. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. So a question from Johnny Sumilia. Um, um, do you have records of ferns from Mount Balatukan okay. and Mount Sumagaya in northern Mindanao? Okay. Uh, okay, Ma'am Jani, no? thank you. Uh, with with that, uh, Mount Balagtukan and Sumagaya, those are mountain ranges no, connecting Mount Tago, Mount Pantaro, no? Mount, pa- Mount, Taro, mm-hmm. Mount Tago. So yung northern part, no? yun yung mga mountain ranges on the northern part. So actually, we don't have a data about the ferns in that area, no? in Balatukan and Sumagaya. And it's also possible that the species that we collected here in the uh, in the southern part yung Tago range can also be found in that area so siguro if you're interested no siguro i-check natin you will you, you conduct this uh, touristic work and then we can compare no if this species in Mount Tago can also be found no kay kasi ano lang sila eh, parang connected sila na na range sa Tago yung uh, Mount Balatukan at saka yung Sumagaya sa northern Mindanao okay thank you so a uh, question from Cherry Mangawang Uh, considering Mindanao and based on your researches conducted, they, uh, she's asking if uh, uh, she's asking what are the challenges that you have met while studying pteridophytes? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Cherry Mangawang. No? So she's from uh, USM. No? Uh, actually, Ma'am Cherry, uh, there are many challenges no, in, in conducting uh, this floristic work. No? especially no in preparation pa lang in field work and of course in selecting the sites no ang crucial would be selecting the sites because as we all know as a field person we need to comply all the requirements no we need to secure gratuitous permit we need to ask a PIC or sometimes the local people would uh, would ask about this uh, FPIC no which is a very long process so so that is why no we need to consider that no and also aside from Uh, yung area is delicado no mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. isa din yung challenge natin no delicado yung area no just like uh, what we did no in in one of the parts of apo the northern part in magpet so the bagani no we have the bagani they have these uh, long arms no kasi guys no the coordinate kami sa LGU or sa dato or sa ano yun yung advice nila kaya 
during that time, medyo ano din kami, yung parang natatakot kasi may dala silang ano. Mm-hmm. But we are secured, no? Secured kami kasi alam nila, no? Uh, alam ng aware naman yung ano, yung 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 sa munisipyo, yung sa barangay, at saka yung DNR na nandun kami sa 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 area. So that is why yun yung advice nila, magdala ng mga arm, no? Uh, mga bagani. So we are very thankful with that kasi at tinitingin tinitingnan nila yung safety namin, no? So we need to consider consider the safety, the permits, and also we need to consider budget, no? Yeah. In doing floristic work, kailangan natin ng malaking budget, no? In one of our field works, gagastos kami ng 200 or 300,000, no? Malaking budget 'yan na kailangan. So Hello. Wait lang ha. I think we've encountered the uh, uh, technical sorry, difficulty. Nawala. Okay, sorry na wala po. Okay lang sir, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yun yung mga challenges, no? And of course, we need to collaborate. Yun talaga yung term, no? We cannot work independently, no? So dapat mag-collaborate tayo just like me, no? Hindi ako expert lahat ng ano ng plant group. So we need to collaborate with other institutions with other experts, no? So I think that's all about um uh, Dr. Cherry. Thank you, Ma'am Cherry, for that uh, question. And uh, I hope na maraming so sa mga senior ni Sir Fulgent ay marami kayong uh, uh, nakuha. So from uh, Miss, I think, Andy Ma'am. So a uh, very, uh, okay. Uh, the question is, what is the best time to do uh, spore collection? Spore collection, okay. That's a good question. So in collecting spores, uh, we need to consider no yung maturity ng spore or yung sorai no mm-hmm. if i check natin yung upper surface of the uh, the lower surface of the front i check natin no kapag matitingnan natin alam natin na mature na yun once it touch mo siya tapos may mafi-feel ka na mga powdery na parts so meaning ready na yan for collection pero pag hindi pa talaga especially if green pa siya no do not collect yung yung sorai na green pa no hindi pa yan mature hindi pa sila nag-undergo ng meiosis, no? So dapat yung ano na medyo dark yung color at saka pag hinawakan mo, medyo may didikit na ng mga powder na ano. So yun ang yung mga spores. So that's I think that that's the right way in collecting the uh the spores no of the ferns. Okay, thank you. Uh question from all John J sa Avedra. Sir, do you have plans on conducting field work here in Southern Mindanao? Southern Mindanao. Okay. Actually, no, uh, for the southern part of Mindanao, uh, although we have some data in Mount Matutum, that's the work one of, uh, that's the work of uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Gonzalez, uh, one of the graduate students, former graduate students of Dr. Amoroso. But then, major old na yun, no? yung, 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 yung data niya. <laughs> I think 2000, year 2000 pa. So there's really need, need to, to update. So, if there's no if there's a fund or there's a collaboration or sino yung gusto makipag-collaborate then we are yes you know we are willing to collaborate no our center no the the, the sebrem no you can mm-hmm. ask no the our director or ana yung para mag-collaborate tayo so of course we need to consider yung funding talaga <laughs> yes yes okay so uh i hope uh at your end especially to our audience naririnig niyo pa or Yung uh, sinasabi ni Sir Fulgent, I think uh, his connection is getting erratic. But uh, uh, just the same, if you want to contact him, if you want to go um, ask him some uh, questions about his studies and request for collaboration, just uh, go to cfulgent at cmu.edu.ph. So I'm going to repeat it. Cfulgent, uh, cfulgent at cmu.edu. Ph. So let's continue. So from Alma Joy Labarca, uh, can you share how to preserve or process uh, the samples of vern species for voucher specimens directly at the site? Siguro ano lang, uh, lang. I, I guess pina, uh, pinakita nyo na yan, sir. Pero uh, just in a nutshell, mm-hmm. can you give Alma Joy Labarca a gist of uh, the process of uh, 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 processing the ferns on site. Okay, okay. For the collection of the specimens, now we we need to do it scientifically. Now, hindi lang collect, 
Tapos hindi mo ipaprocess talaga ng maayo. So you need to collect scientifically and of course in collecting ferns, no, we need to check no if fertile, if may fertile sila. No, meaning mature na sila kasi may fertile part because that's very crucial for the ferns. No, we can identify up to the species level if you if your collection is fertile. No, may may sorai sila. So that's one of the the technique. No, dapat i-check natin yung fern if mature may fertile na sila na part. And then of course, no, if they are small ferns, you can just uproot. No, pwede mo siya kunin lang if maliliit sila na ferns, walang problema. No, you can just uproot including the rhizome. No, you need to really to collect the rhizome for the small ferns because there are many characters no na makikita natin diyan. So once ma-collect mo na 'yan, so if gusto mo i-process talaga diretso, you need to use a this technique, yung newspaper, no? Yung common lang na na tinuturo sa atin yung sa systematics or sa botany, mm -hmm. yung pressing, no? We have the old newspaper and then uh, with that ilagay mo yung plant of course linisan mo yan no bago mo i-press linisan mo yan no linisan tanggalin mo yung mga mga debris yung mga soil and so on and then ilagay mo sa newspaper and then you're going to press no the specimen and of course dapat maganda yung pag-press no hindi lang basta-basta no dapat magaling kang mag-arrange ng ng front tapos i-press mo and eventually after that uh, if you are in the field no just like us let's take kami for uh, seven days or ten days, yung ginawa namin, yung mga press, no? madami na tayong na-press na, na specimens. So yung ginawa namin, inilagay namin sa isang malaking uh, cellophane, yun, yung transparent cellophane, at nilalagyan namin ng denatured alcohol. Mm -hmm. So bakit namin nilagyan ng denatured alcohol? That, that's one way of preserving, no? para ma-preserve natin yung, yung specimen. Because we are, you are, hindi tayo mag-expect na pagdating natin sa university that you can process directly the specimens although that's really the the main thing na dapat i-process na, natin but in some cases now we are very busy just like us i'm doing teaching and also although we have assistant but sometimes busy tayo so it can stay a week or a month no nandiyan sa alcohol hindi siya masisira but eventually you need to change no the newspaper pagdating mo doon pag magpo-process ka na of course yung data kung anong nilagay mo doon sa newspaper na data dapat mm -hmm. kukopyahin mo yon no mag-change ka ng newspaper and in our case we have the mechanical dryer yung mechanical dryer madali lang sa amin kasi ilalagay lang namin doon nakapile tapos i-on lang namin yung mechanical dryer but for beginners you can use the you know yung ano lang sun dry sun drying no pwede niyo gamitin pero make sure nga nakapress talaga lahat ng specimens no so that's uh, how are you going to uh, collect and process the specimens. And okay. after that one, hindi lang mag-end dyan, dapat i-mount po, i -mount po mo pa yung herbarium no? using the mounting sheet. Okay, thank you. So, Alma Joy Labarca, I hope na na, na gets mo yung uh, in-itimize ni Sir Fulgent na methodology on how to preserve your ferns and lycophytes. So, a question from Judith Gomez is up. So, a question lang is uh, how do how long does a fern and uh, the lycophytes live? Karo ba siya ano ano yung lifespan po ba niya? How long? Ganun? No. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, in some species, no, yung phenology. Actually, that is lacking, no. Yung phenological study about the fern. Yun yung konti lang if you search sa internet konti talaga konti lang talaga yung nagsa-study on the phenology no yung yung fern but in mm -hmm. the case of tree ferns no they can live uh 100 years no uh yung example yung tree fern na kinakat nila yung very common yung uh, uh Spirophthorus glauca or yung ano no yung local name so mm -hmm. yan mga ilang years na yan no there are some slow growing no, na mga species of ferns especially those species na makikita natin sa forest no sa loob ng forest yung may mga species na fast growing but basically no most of them slow growing yung mga ferns no just like yung ginagawa namin dito sa spore culture tissue lab no uh, medyo matagal talaga yung yung paggrow ng ferns at kailangan talaga ng ano yung more time no dapat you need to take care you need to check time to time yung condition nila so magvary yan no there are some species na yung yung life cycle niya uh, madali lang no so once nga mamatay yung isang dahon of course may tutubo naman yan na ano na mga bagong dahon no? mm -hmm. yun yun yung sa sa life cycle yung sa, sa ferns okay so uh, a question from Harold J Sumilhig um what section or sections of the fern and lycophyte should the researcher 
take a photo of for documentation <coughs> purposes. And uh, what alternative approaches uh, can be used to collect the samples for herbarium or herbaria if the researcher is unable to press the ferns immediately uh, in the field? Okay. No? Thank you. No? Uh, that's a good question no? regarding mm -hmm. how are you going to properly document no, the, the species of ferns and lycophytes. So basically, in, in taking photographs of the ferns, no, first you need to take a, the habit no, of that plant. Now, if check to check if that's a terrestrial or epiphyte, so yung habit niya, it check natin because that's very important. And also, uh, what is very important is yung focus ng dahon niya or yung front, and of course yung fertile part niya, yung sorai, because those are the diagnostic characters or characteristics of the fern. So dapat yun yung tatlo, no? Kait yung habit, yung focus ng front ng dahon, at saka yung sorai or yung fertile part niya. And then for the next question, uh, what ano yung alternative approach no, should be used in collecting samples? So the question would be, ilang ano ba? Uh, immediately, herbarium is able to press first immediately in the field. So ang tanong ko, uh, bakit hindi mo mape-press yung, yung specimens? No? So depende yan. No? Uh, if during daytime, if you really want to maximize your time, so collect ka lang ng collect. Lagay mo sa cellophane, yung data with the tags. And then eventually, during night time, dapat i-process mo yung specimens. Kasi yung mga ferns, kumukulo yung dahon nila. No, once kayo ma-expose na yan no, sa heat or ano ba, to mag-ano na yan, mag, uh, mag, magkukulo na yung dahon. So, hindi na maganda yung, ano, yung, yung, yung herbarium mo. So, uh, I advise, no, kung morning ka mag-collect, and then pagkahapon, no, if you have time, start pressing your specimens. No? So, siguro yes. madali, actually, pressing the specimens is madali lang Madali na siya, pero it needs time. No? Mm -hmm. Especially kapag uh, if, if you've been able to collect a lot of specimens. No? So, yes. ang technique dyan yes, sabi, exactly. wag mo na matutulog. <laughs> <laughs> yes po. <laughs> okay, uh, I think uh, uh, we have uh, just a few questions remaining. Um, again, from Aljan J. Saavedra, Sir, how do you preserve the spores? of the ferns uh, which you have collected. Okay, no, uh, there are many and uh, yung 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 tanong na yan, no? Ano yung purpose natin sa spores? No, is it for for the mass propagation or it is just for for uh, if you check if you're trying to check the morphology or i preserve mo lang yan no, para ma-check yung features niya. So if you collect the spores, no, uh, for uh, propagation, so simple lang no sa so, yung tanong kanina na ano ano yung right time sa pag-collect ng spores so dapat check mo no, pag pag ano mo sa sa front no pag may didikit na yan na parang powdery pwede na yun i-collect pero pag hindi pa talaga wag yung i-collect kasi hindi pa yan mature and then also dali lang ilagay mo lang sa papel no? if you have this fertile front i-collect mo i-cut mo ng using the the uh, yung gunting i-air dry mo lang siya no i-air dry mo lang siya Wag mong i-expose sa mechanical dryer, air dry lang, then let the spores or yung sporangia magburst kasi lalabas yan manually yung spores, no? So pag lalabas na yung spores, if your aim is to propagate this species, no? Pwede mo siya ilagay sa tube, no? May tube na yung mga falcon tubes, pwede mo ilagay diyan. Tapos make sure nga walang tubig, no? Dapat dry. Walang tubig kasi pag may tubig yan, mag-germinate yan yung, yung spores. So, dapat dry collection. And then, you can keep that one in your refrigerator. No? And then, you can still use that one in... Uh, according to literature, the lower the temperature, the better. Now, you can prolong the viability of the spores. Yeah, okay. So, uh, last question na ito. Uh, I'm sorry, we cannot uh, accommodate uh, uh, the other questions. But this one is from Chanel Alisa Trinidad. Um, sir, you've mentioned earlier that you're using agar media and agar media is expensive for the, to cultivate ferns. So yes. she's asking what is the composition of the alternative media that you can use to cultivate these collect, collected <laughs> ferns? Okay, okay, thank you for that question. No, so actually, for that uh, question, so siguro hindi ko maibibigay yung, yung exact, no? yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, for that uh, reason, no, because we are applying for, for the uh, UM, no, mm -hmm. on the process na siya, and they're waiting for the, the approval for that different media. So, siguro, once na maano siya, siguro, when we have this 
ano na yung ano ta- registered na talaga siya. So maybe we can share no that uh, information sa inyo mm-hmm. na kung ano yung mga composition or ano yung mga media na ginagamit namin. Okay, ang UMI uh, uh, utility model. Yes, so utility it's, uh, model. It, it's like a, a small patent. Yes. Okay. So well, uh, for intellectual property protection. Yes. I guess that's uh, I think that's that's the last question from our audience. Let me before we conclude our program, uh, let me just stop my my stream. Right. So, um maraming maraming salamat Sir Fulgent for that uh, very uh, wonderful presentation. It's nice to know na maraming nangyayari na ganitong uh, researches sa uh, Mindanao. And uh, I guess uh, marami pa hong pwedeng mangyari at ma-discover sa, sa Mindanao in the next few years uh, through Sebrem and your group. And um, make sure that you have, uh, to the audience, make sure that you have uh, click on the link to the evaluation form. Uh, I put it in the chat box. And uh, again, if you want to ask uh, Sir Fulgent uh, other pressing questions, especially kung baka mamaya you're, you're doing fern studies as well, uh, just go, just email him at cfulgent at cmu at, uh, at cmu.edu.ph. So, Sir Fulgent, I hope you see my screen. Yes, sir. So, um, the Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UP Los Banos, awards this uh, certificate of recognition to Dr. Fulgen P. Curitico for serving as our resource person during this um, biodiversity seminar series, uh, sessions, ferns and lycophytes of Mindanao, diversity, conservation and new discoveries held today at 29th of April from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. Uh, incidentally, we have uh, around 200 participants here in Zoom and around 90 to 100 uh, viewers in our Facebook uh, live edition. And um, of course, this uh, certificate is uh, signed by our director, Marian P. De Leon. And with that, maraming salamat, Sir uh, Fulgent. And thank you for accepting our uh, invitation. And um, sa ating mga audiences, uh, we will still have another seminar tomorrow uh, starting at 10 a.m. So today we tackled the ferns and tomorrow we'll be talking about uh, palms, significant, significant discoveries in, farm, in palms. And we will have uh, Professor Jiro Adorador of the Institute of Biological Sciences here at UPLB as our uh, speaker. So, maraming salamat and we hope that you have registered there and see you tomorrow. Maraming salamat. Okay, Ingat okay po thank lahat. you po sa lahat. Ingat. Thank you po. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Sige po. Regards na lang kina Sir Dave. Yes, sir yes. Dave, so, Julius. So, na, nandyan lang yan. Mga, <laughs> mga CMU guys. Yes po. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much sa lahat.